Good evening, everybody. It is June the 17th, 2022, and this is the Chinchilla Picking Podcast. As always, we hope to be entertaining, educational, and uplifting because we want everyone to make money. My name is David Underwood, and as always, I am here with Brandon Beaver. Brandon, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I am doing well, man. I am doing well. I'm uh, enjoying the summer weather. I'm about to get out and go for a brisk walk after this show. So I don't even know. You can't call it a brisk walk in summer, do you? You just call it a nice summerly, I don't know, summer walk. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not been brisk here. It's been in the 90s. Yeah, it's very hot, very humid. Heat wave. Uh, I mean, that's heading everywhere right now, isn't it not? Yeah. And we had those crazy storms last week, too. That was Those were insane. We had like 60 mile per hour plus winds wild day my power was out for about all night probably about 12 hours sorry to hear that man yeah it sucked all right well um i'll tell you what um the rules are guys if you're a first time listener thank you uh and if you like what you hear please hit the subscribe button uh subscribe to us follow us uh reach out to us dm us reach out uh brandon's always on stock twits and he always answers his email at brandonbeaver at chinchillapicking.com. <laughs> um, I'll get to you. But, uh, our, our rules of the show are Brandon and I get together five to ten minutes before the show, and we tell each other what we're going to talk about. We do not actually discuss it. You hear the live discussion back and forth and the rant and rave here for you on the show. Those are the rules. Brandon is going to go first, leading out the topics. Brandon, take it away. Okay, so I don't know if you saw this today, but it's one of my favorite things because now today I get to talk about my favorite thing, which is stocks, and then another one of my favorite things, which is wrestling, because there is a storyline that has came out that is real, that is so much better than anything that could ever be written as far as drama got, uh, goes. So let's, let, let me get into this. Let, let's, let's talk about the history real quick in case you didn't know. WWE was actually founded by Vince McMahon's grandfather, Jess McMahon, as the Capital Wrestling Corporation in 1953. It was then passed down to Vince McMahon Sr., where its name changed to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. And then in 1979 to the World Wrestling Federation, Vince McMahon Jr. bought the company from his father in 1982. So this is a company that's been in the family for around 75 years now on its third generation already vince mcmahon has made it through the steroid scandal in the 90s where he almost went to jail because people were accusing him of distributing steroids he was found innocent the monday night wars wcw came along and competed with the wwe they were getting somewhere around at the time like seven to eight million viewers just from the united states every monday night then the WWE became, uh, well, I don't want to say victim, but better words are out there. Sure, maybe, I don't know, but we'll say victim for right now. Uh, of a lawsuit filed by the World Wildlife Foundation, they had to change their name to WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment. And there was a whole thing going on um, called Get the F Out to get the Federation out of the name. They changed it to WWE, so on. Well, a few months back, Vince McMahon's stepdaughter, not stepdaughter, real daughter, I'll edit that. Vince McMahon's daughter, Stephanie, took leave of absence from the company. This shocked the wrestling world. Everybody was, was like confused by it. Nobody knew why it happened. Well, just in the past week, it turns out that the uh, board of directors for WWE is investigating, in particular, one instance of $3 million of hush money being paid out to a paralegal who apparently had consensual sexual contact with Vince McMahon and their head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis. Apparently this happened back in April, which is the same time frame as to when Stephanie stepped down. She was high up in the company. She was head of merchandising. Uh, she, she was up there. So she takes a step down. Um, and I'm wondering if there's correlation there. Maybe she found out uh, before we did and she got upset. Who knows? I don't know. Anyways, turns out today, Vince McMahon announced that he's stepping aside as CEO. Now, he didn't say step down. Step aside 
makes me think that he believes at least this might be temporary. Uh, so he's stepping aside as CEO to cooperate with the investigation and until the investigation concludes. In the meantime, Stephanie McMahon is now back. She's taking over as CEO in the interim, at least, until this is all uh, this is all figured out. Now, the stock really didn't take a hit. I mean, yes, today it was down a little bit, about 3%, but the market was here or there anyways today. Uh, for the week, it's up just a little bit. One of the reasons why is because recently Vince McMahon has said that WWE is for sale. He said their door is open to all negotiations. There's been rumors that NBC Universal might want to buy them out. There's been rumors that Disney might want to buy them out. This headache for Vince McMahon could be what seals the deal that WWE does get sold. And I think that's what investors are, are hoping for. People probably bought it on the news today thinking that, well, maybe this makes it more likely that WWE gets bought out. Dave, did you have a question? No, man, I, I am letting you roll with this right now. I, I know how much you enjoy wrestling and stocks, and now you get to combine them both. Yes, yes, it's great. So, yeah, potential rumors between NBC and Disney. There, there's been some probable, probably some more drama around this, too, because back in you know the early 2000s, the whole game plan was that Vince McMahon would leave the company to his children. But there's been drama. Shane McMahon's been in and out of the company, and Stephanie was kind of in and out at the very beginning, too. So it looks like this might actually happen now it might get sold but it's a rumor and this is a company that's still trading on a price to earnings ratio of 28 i am not buying it right now uh they have in the past five years they've taken a stock that used to just do nothing and you know what would happen is you could buy this stock uh somewhere around november in the lead up to wrestlemania and you sell it at the lead up to wrestlemania and then it would come right back down it would do nothing um, but their global sales and their global reach has expanded so greatly that this thing has just taken off in the last five years. So the money is there. The money is there, and they've been growing very well. It would not surprise me to see Disney or NBC Universal buy them out. It wouldn't, but I'm not buying it for that reason. I'm not buying it at all right now. It's too expensive. Go ahead, Dave. I was just going to say so, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I'm going to start this off by saying I had a great year last year <laughs> in, in trading and picking and investing. This year, not so well, right? Yeah. Uh, but like a lot of people, a lot of people have had trouble this year. But especially with mergers and acquisitions. Yep. Right now, I, uh, I'm i not doing too well calling these. And so I'm definitely not investing on any company based off merger and acquisition news. You know, and, and that would be my only hesitation. Huh? Are you still in Activision? I am still in Activision. Yes. Yeah, me too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I'm holding on that one, but I, I don't like how long I'm having to hold for the percentage rate of return I'm going to get. Um, yeah, that does I, that does suck. But when you think about the percentage rate of return that you're going to get on the S and P 500 for the year, you're probably going to outperform it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I performed the S and P, but I've always outperformed the S and P. To me, that's no longer a benchmark for myself. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good benchmark for a new uh, trader and investor. Sure. Um, you know, by hold myself to a, a higher personal standard than that. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not interested in anything that has to do with mergers and acquisitions right now. Cause I got money tied up and sitting there, not, not making me more money uh, in, in those areas. But that's just how I feel personally. Okay. And do I think there's a good possibility of, of, NBC Universal buying this out? Yes, there's a good possibility. I can't see Disney. It just doesn't fit well with what they have. It well, they have ESPN. With, it fits better with NBC. But yo, you're thinking ESPN? Uh, because D Disney okay. owns ESPN. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> may, okay, maybe maybe in the ESPN format, if that's what you're thinking, I, I could see a slight possibility that I think NBC fits better. I think even a Paramount. Paramount fits well. Yeah. Um, quite quite randomly, Sports Center started reporting on wrestling stuff like three or four years ago. I don't know if they're still doing it, 
But that, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Coachman used to be an announcer on WWE, and then he went to Sports Center or ESPN, one of those programs on there. And then, and then he started reporting on wrestling. Um, it, it, and that to me, I was like, oh, maybe Disney will buy him out. That's weird that that's happening because it never happened before. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. It could have been just happened. testing the market too. So, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's all I got to say, though. WWE has been like famously, well, at least with wrestling fans, releasing a ton of talent for budget cuts, despite the fact that they've had record profit growth. Now, COVID was not too good to them because they're a live event uh, company. But since since COVID, they've been doing just fine. And they're releasing a a bunch of people for budget cuts. and, And it really looks to me like they're trimming themselves down to be sold. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. That's all I got on, on WWE, man. Okay, so let's uh, move on. I bought Spy for the first time in years since pre-COVID uh, this week, and I'm planning on adding uh, over the course of the year because I've said before that I think that this uh, this bear market is going to last all year. I think we're going to have caps on, on all the prices. I, I really do. It may not. I don't know. But I think that SPY right now is it's at a safe buying uh, position. I'm buying so it's an S and P 500 ETF. If anybody doesn't know, it's got one of the lowest fees around for an ETF, which makes it very attractive to traders and investors alike. It's it's uh, um, it's as anchored to the S and P 500 as you could probably get. Go ahead, Dave. All right, so a couple things already in <laughs> those those first couple of comments. First thing is, you're not the first person I've talked to recently that thinks that this bear market is going to last longer than a year, even though nobody was saying that back in January besides maybe you, Brandon. You're probably the only one who's being consistent with this. Nobody was saying that, but now everybody's saying that. Um, That tells me, all right, right now you guys are probably wrong because everybody's saying something. I usually do the opposite and I make money. Now, I've always uh, I've always maintained that they should see the stock market turn around come fall. I think this is going to continue to go down, and then in fall we're going to start to see the good the good uh, golden uh, stocks, the ones that are should not be beaten up, start to move up and start to rise and get back to where they were before. Because in most recessions, which I believe we are in one, uh, we got to wait till July comes out in the GDP report and to, to actually confirm it. Because first quarter GDP was negative, so second quarter is boom recession. But most recessions have a V or a U, and so on the other side, you make money. Um, I, I believe you should be investing now because come fall, I think we're going to see a slight turnaround in the good companies already. Not That's not possible. the end of the year. It's possible. I do think that the I mean with the Federal Reserve still got like what ten months or ten rate hikes left. I think. Is it nine or 10? I can't remember. Anyways, as long as they're hiking rates, I, rates, I think that there's a cap on, on the growth of the S&P 500. And I think it's going to be a tough, tough year as long as they're doing that. Now, it's a good thing that they're doing it because we need to get inflation under control. And at some point, the market will like it. I think that actually we could have been there on Wednesday. They announced that 75 point basics hike right? I think the market was hoping for 100. I think if we would have gotten 100, the market might have rallied the past two days. Because I think they're looking for some sort of um, some sort of clue that the Fed can get this thing under control. This is a, now this is a Fed that has they dragged their feet all last year. Didn't 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 look at any of the warning signs. We were constantly calling them out on this podcast. I mean, there was lots of warning signs to start raising rates last year slowly, and they chose not to. This is a Fed that has dragged his feet. Do you, did you really think they're actually going to do a full 100 points? Well, no, man. Of course uh, we're going to do 75. They're, last, they're, they, they don't last want to. Year, last year, Jerome Powell was waiting to be reelected or renominated, And I don't think he was wanting to do anything politically, uh, you know, unpopular that, you know, might get him replaced. So – that's why I thought he was dragging his feet last last year, but I don't think 100 basis points is enough. With that being said, we we are starting to see the first dominoes fall as far as uh, maybe peak inflation goes. I talked a little bit about it last week. Um, some experts are saying that in retail, in the coming months, you will see the best deals that you have ever seen 
in things like technology and uh, and furniture and, and, and you know discretionary items. Uh, the chip shortage is starting to abate. It's not going to be a shortage anymore. Um, furniture that was ordered two or three years ago that you know was on delay uh, is well not two or three years but two years ago that was on delay because of COVID is arriving and companies have excess inventories to get through target and walmart in particular uh restoration hardware would be another one so we're going to start seeing some price discounts it's not going to go into groceries or anything like that yet but i think eventually we'll get there um starting to see some price cuts on a, on a massive scale and that's a good thing for sure. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a good thing, but you already have companies like Revlon uh, filing Chapter 11. You have almost every single major U.S. company on a hiring freeze of some sort or a job cut. You have uh, companies that uh, stitch fix. They, they cut, what, 10% of their, of their uh, workforce recently, too, as well. And they may not make it by the end of the year. They may be gone. I mean, you already got companies tapping out. You got the U.S. Uh, families they're already saying, hey, guys, we're getting pushed a lot here. I, I believe that the uh, average American family is going to start uh, with two more rate hikes. They're going to tap out and they're going to say, we can't keep buying. We have to stop. And the prices are going to have to go down. And so then that, that's, that's the whole purpose of this. Yeah. But I believe that's when it's going to happen is two more rate hikes. Hi, uh, and you know, I would love to see 100 basis uh, rate hikes. That would That would really move it along. That would guarantee my prediction. And then uh, you would see, uh, you would definitely see the U.S. consumer slow down. And then because of that, inflation comes down. The economy uh, starts really showing the signs of recession. And then, you know, we, we come out, we start coming out the other side with the stocks. Stocks come out earlier. Stocks start working back three months before the U.S. household will start seeing any kind of improvement. You got people waiting for deals right now, too, which is another sign of uh future deflation people start putting their money in the bank account instead of spending it and waiting on uh better deals down the road that's another sign of deflation uh that is maybe happening already and that's starting to you know uh permeate through the economy not gonna well, hit I mean, gas and it's not gonna hit groceries which are the most important thing unfortunately at least not right now but there's people that are waiting out to go. They want to go buy that 80 inch TV at 50 percent off. So they're going to wait a couple months for it. You know, and two months ago, Brandon, I was telling people in my personal life, I was saying, hey, guys, uh, you know, we're heading into a recession if we're not in one already. And they said, well, what do we do in this recession, Dave? I say, well, you look for strong companies to buy or you save up money because you're going to need it in case you get laid off from your work. Or, you know, if things just get too high of cost, you need the extra money to get you through those tough times so we come out the other side. Yeah. You know, and that was always my recommendation to people uh, during that time. And it seems like that recommendation is showing true. And I, I don't believe, I believe the companies that are going to hurt the most are, are right uh, going forward are going to be fintech, especially since yeah. Apple reached into the fintech world. Because now people are going to use Apple for fintech and no longer... Uh, you know, a firm might will still be around, but there's other ones. PayPal will probably still be around, but any other smaller ones after a firm PayPal and Apple are just, you know, I don't know. I mean, are we going to see a Samsung fintech? Are we going to start? I mean, are the big companies going to start getting their own financial um, layway or what, what have you type of uh, payment programs? I think SoftBank has already started it in Japan. They're one of Japan's largest banks. See, I mean, and but that's what I'm saying, Brandon, is like there's so many people in this field now that unless you're associated with a big name brand, now it's like, you know, no one's no one's going to use you. Yeah. And the only reason people are going to use a firm is because of Amazon. Yeah. And they're attached to other big name retailers as well. They've been getting their name out and, and um, attaching themselves to uh, retailers I can't talk about. But <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean that that's that's the only reasons why you would you would use a firm. So I mean, it. it I, I see I see a lot of those those ones being hurt because not many people are going to be able to afford those monthly payments. So some people are going to default because inflation is too high and they can't make them. And so defaults are going to go up. And this is by I'm talking my timeline about ish is like November December of this year. You think so? 
Yeah, they, they're but not going to be able to make the stocks payments. will come back before that probably. Uh, yeah. You'll start to see that you'll start to people will start to see through the storm clouds and they'll start to see where the peak is and that'll make things more clear and investors like things to be more clear. And that's one of the reasons why I'm talking about like the uh, discretionary items coming down in price, because that's one of the things that we could look at and say, maybe we're getting to the point where inflation starts to peak as the shortages start to clear up at least. And, some prices start to come down. This seems to be the first domino. And it's, start, it's starting right now. There's a reason why I bought SPY. It's starting right now to become a little bit more clear. I think it's going to be a shallow recession. I don't think it's going to be a big thing. I don't think we'll have another 2008 or 2009. Uh, I don't think that we're going to have another like you know Great Depression or anything like that. I think it's going to be shallow. I think we'll have 5% unemployment, and I think we'll get through it. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. Maybe, you know, I just, I think right now, if you go and you buy these great companies, even if you buy SPY, one year from now, I think you'll be fine. Two years from now, for sure, you'll be okay and you'll be happy you did it. I I, I, I think if you, whatever, if you buy a great company now, such as Apple, you're going to have a nice return this time next year. Yep. Um, Apple, NVIDIA. Uh, I mean, my usual suspects on my list, I think if you buy them and they're strong companies, and they have good balance sheets and good profit margins. They'll be good next year. I even I think Walmart's going to come out looking great. I think they're better positioned than rivals like Target. I would I would definitely say Walmart has better position themselves. Um, so I mean, there's there's good companies you can buy, and everybody's saying like buy Dollar General, buy Dollar General. We're heading recession. Well, I mean, how many people have bought Dollar General recently now this past week because that's been all over the headlines. Yeah, and you want like if everybody's that- telling me to buy Dollar General. You know, I'm buying a put call, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Dollar General has to keep their prices down. You want a company that wants to put their prices down to to uh, compete with their, uh, you know, with with other uh, other companies. You you want them to be bringing prices down so they can put the other guy out of business or try to, you know, at least fend off their market share. But you don't want a company that has to keep prices down in, in an inflationary environment. Dollar General, I think, is one of those companies. Uh, you probably see a lot of store closures this year of Dollar General, um, or fan, you know, and even Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, and stuff like that. I think that they're going to have some issues. But Walmart, razor thin net pro, uh, profit margin for uh, Walmart, but I believe they can hold it, and I believe they can make up for it by sheer volume. Oh yeah, because people are people are going to need to save money. And where's the where do you think to go to save money? They, you don't want to shop at Dollar General. You want to shop at a Walmart. It's better, yeah. right? Yep. That's the thought process to people. And so they go to Walmart, you know, to save money. You know, I, I've been there. Yep. I, I, I've been there. Uh, uh, t- I think uh, a little under 10 years ago, I was uh, trying to save money and struggle. And I shopped at Walmart, man. Yeah. I did what I had to do. I rolled back prices, right? I shopped there a lot. I shopped there and I shopped Kroger. So. There you go, man. There you go. Um, and other news. Like, just to yeah, say- I mean, well, well, one more thing. One more thing okay, on this. Okay. So what I'm saying is, all right, last thing I'll, I'll make on this whole inflation and where things are headed and all this and yada, yada, yada. My last point on this is that I, I want to let everybody who's listening right now know that if you, let's say you have $10,000 and you, you want to invest, I would say start putting it to work right now and build positions. Don't put all 10,000 to work right away because I think we might go a little lower still. But put in a thousand a week and start building a position. And then 10 weeks are fully invested. And I say this because it looks like I'm going to be fully invested for the first time in forever at my current rate of investing in less than two months, about two months. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to be fully invested. And then I'm just going to be waiting on the market to turn. I started and, out know, with this year with about half of my money on the side. I sold the Santa Claus uh, rally in the beginning of January, and I, I had a lot of cash sitting there, and I waiting to put it to use. And I've been buying slowly over the past month certain things, um, but I'm getting there with you too. And and then every other you know every paycheck I get, I put money into my brokerage, and I'm starting to buy it up because I think we're going to get some clearance here, probably pretty soon. I said that I think the S and P 500 is going to have troubles all year. I do think that, but I think that right now is a good time to buy. I think you're going to get great value and peak to trough right now. 
even if the S and P 500 winds up flat for the year, you could still wind up making 10 percent because you're buying on the dip. You're buying. You're buying it low, right? You're buying it low. And Brandon, we are halfway through the year, and I'm going to remind you of this all year long. At the beginning of the year, you did say that most people would not, most retail traders would not make any money this year. Uh huh. I'm going to come December. I'm still going to be reminding you. Probably lose all, lose all their money. And I, I think it'd be a good because uh, if if you were a risky investor and you're you're playing with your rent money. You're gambling and you don't need to be trading and investing. Yeah. And that's, even if you know what you're doing and you're playing with your rent money, then your mess, your whole psychology is going to be screwed up because you're going to panic. Yep. You're not going to be able to sleep at night. You're going to wonder if you should sell. You're going to be, you know, it, it's not a good place to be in. Your I said this to one of our listeners the other day on text. I said, number one, learn how to find good companies. And then I gave him the link to chinchillapicking.com and the, and the how to grade a stock. Number two, get your mind right. Get your, your psychology right. It's much harder to buy low and sell high than it sounds, right? Because when you're buying low and selling high, you're buying when nobody else is buying. And then you're selling when everybody else is buying. So you're, you're buying when nobody else is buying. You're selling when everybody else is buying. <clears throat> People will side-eye you for it, right? I'm buying stocks right now. Some of my friends are looking at me like I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's fine. It's just right? totally okay with me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, and, and that's because you, you're not following the herd. And Warren Buffett does this all the time. And some, and, you know, people criticize his Berkshire Hathaway company. I mean, it's some, I don't believe all these trades are Warren Buffett anymore, but yeah, some people criticize Berkshire Hathaway, uh, for some of their purchases, but then they end up being right and they end up showing profit. And he's, and it's because, you know, they're buying when nobody else really is. And Berkshire's at a good value again right now because Warren Buffett just announced that this next luncheon is going to be his last. So now everybody's freaking out that he might step down or die. So the stock's taking a huge hit. But we know, you know, we've, we've, we've seen the potential successors. They're all students of Warren Buffett. He's not going to leave that company. Him or Charlie Munger, neither of them are going to leave that company to somebody who's incapable. They will right, follow exactly. the same rules that Warren Buffett made to get rich and, and, to, uh, and to do very well. So I see no problem with it. These kind of things are just buying opportunities. And this is, this is a company that you will have to pry from a cold, head, a cold dead hands. If I have kids when I die, it'll probably go to them. <laughs> I don't there know that I'll ever man. sell it. Hey, that that's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's a great retirement company to own. If I don't have kids, I'll probably donate it to charity charity or something. I don't know. Or my nephew. Maybe my nephew will get it. Uh, something like that. Anyways. Celsius. I don't know. Did you hear about this? Oh, Celsius? here we go. I'm I'm gonna go on mute. I'm gonna let you roll with this okay. for a minute. So Celsius um is a cryptocurrency company. But there's also a drink maker named Celsius that makes energy drinks. And in another example of how institutional buyers and sellers, people who trade stocks for like JP Morgan and uh, Goldman Sachs, just because you have money, it doesn't make you intelligent. Okay. Celsius, the crypto company has been having issues. They've promised a return as much as 18% for their customers if you deposited your crypto uh into their account um they acted like a crypto bank and then they would invest your crypto for you you'd get 18 percent back sunday night they suspended all withdrawals they froze all withdrawals and this is getting the attention of state regulators because they're starting to think well maybe this is a ponzi scheme because 18 percent promising that that's really high. And now you're freezing withdrawals and saying that you're doing it so that you can make sure everybody gets their money back. But it doesn't appear that that's actually going to be the case. So that's number one. And this cryptocurrency can't crash. It looks like Celsius, the crypto bank or whatever they want to call themselves is going to be the domino that falls here. Number two, on Monday, a bunch of institutional investors got really confused and short sold 
the drink company Celsius because they thought it was the crypto company Celsius. And the drink company Celsius took like a 15% hit on Monday because a bunch of people who didn't actually own the stock started selling it. So nice. Nice. I, I love it. the I, first time this has happened. This happens actually quite a bit when you have bear markets. So people just get confused and hit the wrong button. Or, I mean, I don't see this being any computer algorithms that went nuts. I, no, I no. And it, it's like you said, this has happened before in the stock market. When you have two companies with similar names, one, one gets sold off because it was bad news about the other one. It's not the first time for yeah. that. Yeah. However, I do want to talk about the Celsius cryptocurrency, and I want to I want to give my what my thought is on this. Again, I have not researched this. Brandon just mentioned this to me before the show. I did not get a chance to research this, but off the top of my head, here's what I think happened in the cryptocurrency. I've covered on a show a thing called staking, where they can give you those higher rates of returns for cryptocurrency because they stake it, they use it to go ahead and produce more tokens and and handle transactions. So. I have 100 Polkadot coins. I could, you know, hold it and freeze it. And it uses that that formula inside there to to handle um, blockchain transactions and blockchain uh, uh, equations. And then in return, the Polkadot machine will pump out and give me X amount of Polkadots. So that's crypto staking. What probably happened is, A, there was a big thing in the cryptocurrency world with the Terra Luna fiasco and how the stable some stable coins were no longer pegged to one dollar they lost all value and everything everything started selling off at that point on all cryptocurrencies across the board because of that people lost faith and value and what was meant to be an impenetrable code of blockchain blockchain was meant to be this great thing that you just it never fails it failed some code somewhere failed and that 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 freaked out everybody about cryptocurrencies you have that so then let's say that they were actually using polka dot right mm -hmm. so they took the money they used polka dot they put it in there and they were using it to stake and by doing that by the time they get to pull that polka dot back out because of everything that happened with terra luna it's lost 30 percent of their value so even if they did get like five more polka dot coins now they don't have enough back to give back that 18% they promised. Now the company is hurting. And that's probably what happened is the big drop in cryptocurrencies is what I'm thinking happened. So yes, is the company in trouble? Yes. Can they hold up to the 18% that they promised and guaranteed? No. And I would never have guaranteed that that's on them for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So it might not be a, a Ponzi scheme. There might be more to it than, you know, what I saw. They might just actually be... <laughs> um, not running a good company when you guarantee an 18% return. You can say right now our customers are getting an 18% return, but you cannot say I guarantee you an 18% return. That's when you're going to get caught if you don't have the funds to back it. So one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter is a guy named Douglas A. Bonaparte. You should follow him if you haven't yet because he's hilarious, all right? And this is just to do with crypto. It reminded me of this tweet that he uh, he sent out earlier today. He said, today, my oldest daughter graduates from kindergarten. Unfortunately, her job offer from Coinbase was rescinded and she'll now be living at home this summer. <laughs> nice, nice. And another one is stocks down, bonds down, crypto down, blood alcohol level up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now he says he's a contributor on CNBC on there. I don't know. I've never seen him on CBC, CNBC, I think, but he's, he's a really funny guy. You, you know what's funny? And I, I just, I'll just i mention this just quickly. Brandon and I used to admin a Facebook page called, uh, what, what was it again? Oh, my gosh. I don't even Trading remember. Nation. Trading yeah, Nation. Trading Nation. Yeah. Well, we, we started that, and then CNBC started a show called Trade in Nation, and we started getting famous people trying to enter our group. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and we would let them. We would let them enter our group, and then we'd start bombarding them with questions, and they'd be like, oh, wrong group. <laughs> and they would leave. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Yeah, I remember you messaging me, like, so-and-so joined the group. Ask them questions now before they leave. <laughs> <laughs> 
get as much knowledge as you can <laughs> right seriously in the, uh, yeah one guy he, that that guy he was like i don't think this is the right space for this type of uh question or something like that i don't know yeah uh, anyways a little side note brandon and i have been doing this for a while now basically yeah. <laughs> uh what else you got man well, no, I just want to say, yeah, I think that like, hey, if you're new to this market and you're afraid to buy individual stocks and buying SPY is not a bad idea right now. And then you just add to it over the course of the year, because if it doesn't turn around in October and it goes lower, then you can just average down on it. And and we will get out of it. We, we always do. Um, and you won't regret it, you know, just buy stocks with. With money that you're not needing, you know, you don't need to buy a car with it. You don't need to pay your rent with it. Money you won't miss. And then it won't have as bad of an effect on you when the market goes down the way that it has. I'm not panicking. I'm not. I'm down for the year right now. I'll be honest with you. I'm down a little bit for uh, year to date. But I don't really care that much. I'm fine with it because I know the companies that I own are strong. I've learned how to read balance sheets and financial statements and cash flow statements. I, I know they have no trouble as far as um, bankruptcy or debt or anything like that goes. I know it's going to turn around. And these are companies that, you know, people go to to buy. When you go to buy, you know, when you go to ship something, what do you say? You use it as, what is it? A, a, I don't know. It's, just a ver it's a verb. It's a verb. I'm good with grammar kind of but <laughs> when, you, when you go to ship something you say i'll go ahead and fedex that to you that's the, one of the first things that comes to mind it's either fedex or ups but that's one, one of the you know i'm gonna go buy a coke it's it's verb right i'm gonna google that those are yeah. the kind of companies that you want to look for the best deals in because those are the kind of companies that are going to survive the ones that come to the top of the mind right because uh i i just bought a new xerox oh never mind they're not around anymore <laughs> <laughs> no but that and but that's where the financial statements and the balance sheets and and all of that you know, i i wonder if there's any uh um uh 20 some year olds right now that actually got that joke <laughs> <laughs> probably not <laughs> that just shows my age does kinko still exist is that still a thing uh, I have... <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, my final thought, uh, and then I'll give Brandon. Oh, you know where you order. go for that now? By the way, seriously, you go to FedEx. There's the FedEx stores. They offer all those services that Kinkos and Xerox. They bought them. Kinkos, and they pay like you, they charge a lot of money for it. Trust me, I just had to deal with it a couple of years or a couple of weeks ago at my job. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super expensive. Yeah. It's good, for um, FedEx, they... and it's good if you're a shareholder. Right. So my final thought, guys, is uh, I think we have more downside. I think you slowly build positions over the next month to two months. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be fully invested. And then I'm going to wait for the market to turn around. That's what I'm looking at doing. Take your time. Find the strong companies that are going to be here long after this recession. Those are the ones you get to. I think you're going to have a shakeup in fintech. I think we desperately need a shakeup in the cryptocurrency world. I think there's way too many of that. Um, but I think this year is a good year to shake things up and get rid of some of the dead weight on the U.S. economy. So that's what I'm looking at, Brandon. Any other final thoughts? FedEx apparently has enough money to increase their dividend by 58 percent. Which is an odd thing because we're, you know, and I think, too, I think we're in a recession right now. But somehow FedEx is making enough money that they're able to increase the dividend by 58 percent. Nice. All yeah. right. Cool. Well, we thank you for listening. And as always, we hope that we've been entertaining, educational, and uplifting because we want everyone to make money. Have a good night. Have a good night.